So a minister was at his church, and he decided he was going to preach on how the institution of marriage was under assault by popular culture. And as an example, he decided to bring up the show Desperate Housewives. He tried bringing conviction to his congregation by asking, how many of you are going to watch the season finale this week? An awkward silence overtook the congregation as nobody raised their hand. The pastor smiled. <laughs> Nobody's willing to admit that they watch this show? The pastor's mom, who was sitting in the front row, whispered back to him, The finale was last week! <laughs> So we just got done reading Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 24. And to many of us, that might not seem like a very teachable set of scriptures, as Paul is simply telling the Philippian church about his good friend and disciple, Timothy. He makes it clear that he's going to send Timothy to Philippi to strengthen their faith and to be an encouragement, as indeed to Paul himself, Timothy was an encouragement. Uh, and was willing to minister to others as well. Now, today's message is called the gift of faith. In Ephesians chapter 2, we get the foundation for what the gift of faith is. In Ephesians chapter 2, it says, and this is verse 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. So faith is a gift from God. And what's fascinating about the gifts that we get from God is that he likes us to share the things that he gives us. And indeed, the apostles have taught us that faith is also a gift that you can impart to others. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. And so we see this relationship between our faith and how it encourages one another. So it's a strong relationship between faith and encouragement. So we learn here that we are to encourage one another through our faith, but what I've also come to discover is the best way to share our faith is by encouraging one another. You see how it's kind of circular there that one keeps the other one going and as we encourage one another, we become more faithful and as we're more faithful, it encourages one another. It's just a great relationship that God has built into encouragement and faith. Now, as I mentioned before, this summer, we are, we are going to be launching our life group Bible studies and we plan to reach out to our friends, family, and neighbors to help us to grow in our faith and encourage one another. After all, it's not the Lord's desire that we would be self-serving, but rather we, we would be reaching out to others and encouraging them in the faith by remind, reminding them of what the scriptures have to say. And the more we can do that amongst ourselves, the more encouraged we're going to be. Philippians chapter 2, verse 21 says, For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. Paul pointed out to the Philippians that Timothy was different. And how is he different? He says right before that verse that he looks out for the welfare of everybody. So he's not just serving himself first, but rather he is looking upon the needs of everyone else. We can be different as well by looking out for the needs of others, particularly of one another. This world can be a very challenging place, as I'm sure you all know. And I think back to a few days after Jaden was born. We were at the hospital, and we were about to leave, and the nurse was kind of debriefing us for our departure. And as she saw him all uh, set up inside of his car seat, ready to go, tucked in, he was being so quiet and, and peaceful that she looked at him and said, you look so peaceful. Well, it's time to go out into that dark, cruel world out there. And you would never believe this, that when Jaden heard those words, he starts screaming at the top of his lungs as this newborn baby, as though he understood the words that came out of her mouth. 
It is a cruel world out there, and it doesn't take very long to figure that out, obviously. That's why we need to stay rooted in the scriptures and with one another. Fellowship without the word is never enough. The Bible is what truly gives us hope and life because it's through the Bible that we edify one another through the Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy chapter 6 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And by the way, later on inside of that chapter, I recalled that he even gives, Moses, who's the author of this, even gives the reasoning as to why we should be doing this sort of devotional life. And that is so that when others, our children and friends, see us doing certain things, they ask us, why is it that you do these things? And we say, well, it's because of the Lord and what he's done inside of our lives. And here he brought them out of Egypt and wanted to remind them of that reality. By staying rooted in the Bible, we can be life-giving in our words. Proverbs 16, 24 says, Pleasant words are a honeycomb. Sweet to the soul and healing to our bones. Now, one of my favorite pastors is Chuck Swindoll. And he says that many Christians are dying on the vine for lack of, of encouragement from other believers. And another time I heard him say that uh, discouragement is almost an epidemic uh, inside of the church. And I believe that what he's saying is that many Christians are too discouraged to truly live and, and to embrace the life that Jesus Christ has given to us. As people of faith, we should never lack encouragement. And unfortunately, I think that many believe that the only encouragement that we have for this life is that one day we will go to heaven. And you know, that is an awesome reality. That's a great thing. That is the ultimate reward that we all anticipate and should be encouraged by, but it does not take and it does not replace the daily reminders that we should receive to one another. Which reminds me of a story I heard about a married couple that went to get counseling after 50 years, 50 years of marriage. The minister being impressed that they would come to him for marriage counseling after this long, said, in all fairness, I feel that after 50 years, I feel I, like I should be asking you to counsel me. Well, the wife told him that in all their years of marriage, her husband had only told her once that he loved her. The minister asked the husband if that was true. The husband responded, I told her I loved her 50 years ago, and that was good enough. <laughs> God expresses his love to us daily through his gifts of faith. Let us also encourage one another. After all, Jesus even encouraged his disciples in this way. He said, do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you are our highest example of how we should live our lives. As you are the one who gives us everything, and you give us everything that we have, that we might use it, but also to share it with others. As Lord, that even as you do not see your creation as something for you to hide away. Instead, you decided to create life. You decided to create people in your image to be able to appreciate what it was that you were created. So Lord, as being image bearers, let us remember that, that you created so that what was created could be appreciated. Let us remember that the work of our hands produces things that we should desire be appreciated by others, that we can share 
with others. Let us remember, Lord, to encourage one another through faith. That is the ultimate gift that you have given us, Lord. Thank you that you've empowered us through the Holy Spirit to have this gift. Lord, I pray that as we continue to grow and mature as a church, that this gift of faith would become all the more evident. That we'd be a beacon of hope, light, and love to a community that desperately, desperately needs it in times like these. Let us not shrink away in our faith or in our encouragement. Let us not feel embarrassed to be able to share good words with others for the work that they do. But rather, Lord, let us be quick to let people know of the love that we have for them and how we appreciate the work that they do. We praise you, Lord, for the work that you do with your hands and in our lives. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.